One of the worst things about being in a porn addiction for me was the all or nothing extreme thinking where I do these nofap streaks, do really well for a little while, and then I'd end up relapsing and get totally out of control. That would lead to me edging, looking at progressively novel sexual content, looking at stuff that didn't align with my values, end up edging and binging and just feeling absolutely horrendous. So today I am going to share an analogy which can hopefully help you overcome this problem of getting into these porn binges and edging sessions. So first of all, imagine you're you're hungry, but you don't want too much food and you say to yourself, you know what, I'm just going to have one slice of pizza. Maybe you're out and about and yeah, there's some pizza at a buffet or something like that. So you're like, okay, I'm only going to have one slice. And what actually happens is you have that desire to have more food. And so you actually end up wanting another slice. And so you go, actually, you know what, I'll have one more slice. So you have a second slice. And you think in your mind, you know what, I'm going to be satisfied by having one slice. And then you think in your mind, well, I'll be satisfied once I've had two slices. What actually happens is the desire intensifies, the desire increases. And then before you know it, you've had half a pizza. And you're coming up with these rationalizations, these excuses. You know, I suppose eating only half isn't that bad. It's all right. It's not the full pizza. And so all is okay. When at the start, you said you were only going to have one slice. And then what happens is you have these feelings come up, these feelings of deprivation, because you're telling yourself, you know, that's it now. I can't have any more. And you're going around in your mind telling yourself you can't have it. That's a bit frustrating and you're getting a bit irritable because you're like, oh, I can't have this thing that I actually really want because the desire is actually increased and you're wanting it even more than you did before. And then what happens is you want to get out of those feelings of deprivation. And so the full pizza has now gone because you've decided, you know what, I'm going to tuck in. I'm going to have the rest. Why not? You know, I've already eaten half, so I may as well finish the rest of this pizza. And you have all these junky thoughts, these rationalizations, excuses, justifications to continue engaging in the compulsive behavior. And look, there's nothing necessarily wrong with eating a full pizza. I would eat a full pizza very happily. The problem is that originally in this scenario, the person was thinking to themselves, you know, I'm only going to have one slice. And then they've ended up getting totally out of control and eating way more than they originally wanted to do so. So why does this happen? And the answer is to do with dopamine. The Dopamine is the molecule of more. There's a really good book about dopamine that I've read a couple of times and it just explains how dopamine is all about anticipation. It's about the future. It's about rewards that could happen. There's some sort of possibility, this anticipation of a reward in the future. So it's not really about actually obtaining something. People sometimes call it the pleasure molecule, but it's really about anticipation of pleasure. And that's why when you're wanting that first slice, it's like this dopamine is being released and that's trying to sort of send a signal to you to go and eat this pizza. But then when you're actually eating the pizza, it's not like that desire goes away. In fact, you're likely to actually want more pizza because the dopamine circuit is still active and so you're going to want more and more pizza. And so we really want to understand that desires are very rarely satiated when it's a compulsive desire. In fact, they never are. If it's compulsive, you just want more and more and more. So what we need to do is change our thinking because when we change our thinking, we change how we feel. And when we change how we feel, we change how we act. So instead of having this thought of, you know, I'm only going to have one slice and that's it and I can't have any more after I've had one slice, realize that instead what's going to happen is you have one slice. Well, yeah, that's not a problem. But what is going to happen is you're likely to actually want more pizza once you've had that first slice. Instead of thinking, you know, I'm going to be satiated, I'm going to be fulfilled, I'm going to be good once I've had one slice. Actually, what's likely to happen is you'll have one slice and then you're going to want more. And that isn't necessarily a problem because you can have more. It's just you're going to deal with wanting more. And so how much do you want to deal with wanting more pizza? That's the real question to ask yourself. And so often the approach you might want to take if it is a compulsive desire is just to choose not to have any pizza at all or change your perspective and mindset so that you can realize that, you know what, I can have one slice and if that desire comes up, I know how to deal with that and I will be able to choose not to have any more. But don't deny the wanting because the, the craving, the wanting to have more pizza is going to happen if it is a compulsive desire. So really, we want to get into a state of mind where we can just understand what is reasonable and what's not reasonable. You know, having one slice of pizza, having a full pizza 
you know, I'm not going to tell you what's reasonable and what's not. I'd happily have a full pizza. I'd happily have one slice. That's not the problem. As I say, the problem is these thought patterns that go on where people are sort of going back and forth and they're like, I want this thing. I can't have it. I want it. I can't have it. And they're getting into this like inner battle where they're just getting frustrated with themselves and they're out of control. And they're just like, oh my God, you know what? I'm just going to give up and sort of go and binge and edge and eat loads of pizza. And then they end up having maybe like two full pizzas and it's like, oh my God, what are you doing? Or, obviously, in the scenario of pornography, you end up binging and edging and looking for ages and ages. If you look at porn once on Instagram, that desire is not going to be satiated. If you look at it once on any platform, you know, it's not like that takes away the desire. It just actually increases the desire. And I think this is way more true, actually, with porn than it is with food. Um, although I'm sure some people would argue it's true for them more with food than porn. It really depends what your compulsive desire is in. So the overall message to take away from this video is just don't fall for this bullshit that your mind will be satisfied when you've had a bit of something. Don't fall for the bullshit that you look at porn once and you have the orgasm and then that's it and you're never going to like want to do that again. In fact, it's engaging in the compulsive behavior which creates the desire. If you'd never had heroin before, you wouldn't want heroin. But then what happens with people who are addicted to heroin is obviously they want more and more heroin um, because they've tried it that first time. If they had never tried it in the first place, they wouldn't have got hooked. And it's the same with pornography. If you don't fall for the trap of believing that once is okay and that I can engage just a little bit, then you wouldn't have ever got into the addiction. It's really the thought processes around, you know, it's not too bad and, you know, once is okay, that leads to them engaging more and more and more and wanting it more. And the more you look at porn, the more you're going to want to look at porn in the future as well. So what would I recommend you do now? I would say it can be really, really valuable and useful for you to understand how addicted, how much suffering you're going through because of pornography. And it wasn't really until I actually woke up and realized how deep into a porn addiction I really was that I was able to take a bit more responsibility and get free for good. This can be difficult. I'm not going to say it's going to be without discomfort, but it's 100% worth doing. So I will leave a link in the description to the compulsion test and that will help you discover how much of a problem this really is in your life. And I'll give you a score out of 100 and send you an email with some more information as well. Hopefully this video has helped you and I really do wish you the best of luck in terms of overcoming pornography addiction and I hope you have an amazing rest of your day. Bye bye.